From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Coming up next is Live at 5 on WCTE PBS and its streaming platforms to provide updates on communities throughout Central Tennessee. Hello, welcome to WCTE PBS Live at 5. My name is Susan Luna Hazelwood, and tonight I have the honor of speaking with four lovely people. So let's jump right in. Our first guest this evening is Terry Ritter from Cookville Art Studio and Gallery. Welcome, Terry. Hi, Susan. Why don't we start with a little about you telling us about your background, your role at the Cookville Art Studio, and how that works together. Well, I'm um, on the board at the Art Studio, also work the office. I teach classes. I'm a professional painter there, so it kind of keeps us all busy, but everybody at the studio is volunteers. Wonderful. So you all have that whole thing running with just volunteers. We do. That's impressive. I know it's a lot of work. It is. You know, when we have an 1,100 square foot gallery with new shows every month, um, it is a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Yes, that's wonderful. And it's a wonderful place. So Cook, as you mentioned, Cookful Art Studio has many exhibits. You also offer classes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about those? Well, in fact, I looked at the calendar today and we, for the month of October, are offering 31 classes wow. for the month. Um, some of them might be watercolors on Wednesday, but you don't have to sign up for the whole month. You can take one class. They are from beginners to intermediates to advanced classes, and it's in all mediums that you could ever imagine that you might want to think about. Um, we have workshops. We have a new workshop coming up. It's called the Unique Mixed Media, and mm. what she does is amazing. So she does watercolor in color pencil and photography all together and it looks Who like a painting. Artist? Her name is Marcella Rowe. Okay, okay. So that'll be in November on the 16th and 17th, I believe the dates are. Wonderful. I realized I put you on the spot. So That's I'm okay. glad you remember the artist's <laughs> name. <laughs> so, um, but we do do uh, once or twice a, year, a month workshops that aren't our regular classes. And we have a lot of children's classes too for anywhere from elementary school up through high school and young adults. Wonderful. What times are these workshops and classes typically offered? Oh, they, they oh boy, they're all different times. The, of course, the kids' classes are usually after school and early evening. Okay. The adult classes could be anything. I just left the studio and Monica just was finishing an adult um, ceramics class. But then to, uh, tomorrow night, she has a watercolor class. And then next Thursday night, she does adult ceramics. She alternates. Wow. So I usually do my classes on Saturday afternoons or Saturday evenings for those who work. So... We, ver we just try to have a variety. Yes, so something for everyone, it yes. seems like. Yes, of all mm -hmm. age groups, all experience levels. So if you say you can't paint or I can't draw, come on, we can help you. Yeah, that's me. So maybe we'll have to put that to the <laughs> test to see if they really can help someone who can't yes. do anything artistically. So I know you also have exhibits of we artists do. there. So what do you have this month? This month we have what's uh, the gentleman, they titled it, it's the Upper Cumberland Abstract Collective. Okay. And it's an entirely abstract show, which is our first time ever. And it's phenomenal. It's really wonderful. And the three gentlemen are professional painters, and they are also professional tattoo artists. Wow. They are tattoo artists here okay. in town, and they started studying painting to improve their tattooing. <laughs> so um, it's, it's really, really well. And one of the artists is, in fact, finishing his degree at Tennessee Tech in art education. Okay. So multi-talented. Yes. As many people over there are, I'm sure. It is. And when they close, we'll be getting the studio. That will close the end of the month. Okay. Um, and you can come and see it for free from 10 to 4, Monday through Saturday. Uh, they do have their paintings for sale. If you okay. walk in and say, oh, I can't go home mm -hmm. without that one. I have to have that. Um, we will be getting ready for the 20th annual Art Prowl. Yes. We will have 10 artists in our building. And it'll be artists of all different kinds of mediums, from wood turning to painting to sculpture to um, just a variety. It'll be a lot of fun. Some of the artists will be doing demos. So oh, you yeah. can come and watch that also, besides buy their work. And then we go right into our members show. And so okay. our members will each bring in two pieces of artwork to show, and that will run until we close for Christmas. That is fantastic. And I'm not mistaken, you and your husband are both artists, not only members of the studio, but also will be presenting at Art Prowl, right? Yes, we both will. He's a wood turner, okay. and his work has shown in a couple of different galleries. It's beautiful work. Um, I'll be showing, I paint primarily in alcohol inks and acrylic pores. I'll be showing my work and doing demonstrations. 
Wonderful. That's so. fantastic. Yes, I, I looked on the website and everything looks beautiful. I haven't yet seen it in person, but I can't <laughs> wait to, to go over there and see the current exhibit. And so what are some of the other exhibits you have coming up? Well, we are booked now. Our gallery is booked all the way through 2022. Okay. Um, January, we have a unique show coming up. We have a gentleman that came in and wanted to show up the work of his brother. And he uh, books galleries and sells work for his brother, who is in prison. Oh, interesting. And so um, I used to be a prison chaplain. And prisoners do some awesome artwork. And this gets shipped out, and he sells his work for his brother. That's amazing. It, the, the work is amazing. Some of it will be black and white. Some of it will be color. But that will be for the month of January. Wonderful. And then we have three lady artists coming in in February. And we will also still have our um, Upper Cumberland high school art competition in March. Okay. We have the uh, Cookville Art, or Cook, yep, I get Cookville Art, Cookville Camera Club <laughs> in um, April. So it just goes on for the yes. rest of the month. And my husband and I will be back in May with a All show. All right, so. wonderful. So lots of opportunities to see some great art. How can people find more information? Well, you can call the office at 931-526-2424 or our website, Cookville Art, or our email is uh, cumberlandartsociety at yahoo.com. Okay, and where are you physically located? We are located at 186 South Walnut Avenue, Suite A. We're facing Walnut Park, so we're, I guess you could say we're on the back side of the Senior Center, but we've got the view. Wonderful, all right. Well, everybody go check out all of the wonderful art at the Cookville Art Studio and Gallery. Thank you, Terry, for being with us today. Well, thank you for letting me be here, and please do come and see us. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Sports Wrap-Up. I'm Noah McKay with the Upper Cumberland Reporter. Let's take a look around the sports landscape, starting with Tennessee Tech, where the Golden Eagles got their second straight win with a 27-16 victory at North Carolina Central. Tech will be back in action this week as they travel to Nashville to take on the Eddie George-led TSU Tigers. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. In week 8 of the high school football season, White County fell on the road to Hillsboro 52-21. The Warriors gave up 31 unanswered points in the second half as they dropped their fourth straight game in the high school football game of the week. Elsewhere, Livingston had a 13-point lead over Cumberland County in the first half before the Jets came storming back to take a 43-20 victory. Now let's take a look at Week 9. Cookville will travel to Coffee County. Upperman will take on DeKalb County in a big region showdown. Macon County will take on Stone Memorial. The undefeated Clay County Bulldogs will host Grundy County. And Monterey will take on Oneida in the high school football game of the week. If Monterey wins, they will be the Region 2 2A champions. That game will be streamed live on the Upper Cumberland Reporter Facebook page with pregame coverage starting at 6.50. That was the Sports Wrap-Up. I'm Noah McKay. Have a great day. Welcome back to the WCTE PBS studio. Our next guest this evening is one of the founders and owners of the Walnut Street Market, Jim Stockton. I guess I should tell you his name. Uh, the Walnut Street Market is located at 136 South Walnut Avenue in Cookville. It has locally grown food and products from local farmers, artists, and makers. So Jim, what made you decide to open something like this? Well, we want Back uh, about three years ago, me and Randy have always sat down and was part of my owners is Randy Dotson from Waters Farm. We opened this thing to help the farmers to become sustainable food. And with the sustainable food, we, we wanted to reach out into all the Upper Cumberland and basically bring them all local food, local artisans to help at-risk farmers and also have at-risk people who needed the healthy food. Yes, that's wonderful. So what are some of the items that you all have for sale there? Well, we have just about everything there. We have everything from produce to meats locally, to eggs, to dairy, to meat uh, from cheeses and stuff. And then we get into the flowers. We get into uh, the, well, what do you call it? The, um, oh my gosh, the, uh, the, all the artisan stuff, which is 100% from bags, to pottery, to plants to metal work, to everything. So we cover it all. We really want to help and support all the local artisans, the food makers, everybody. That is fantastic. Do you want to mention some specific artists that you may not put you on the spot again? Oh, you don't want to put you on the spot? Well, there's 20 the right now. We, or... we have grown to 27 vendors right wow, now. Wow, that's fantastic. So, and I just added three more this week. So we have fresh mushrooms there for, come from Possum Bottom Farms down towards Chattanooga, his largest organic mushroom farmer in the state. And we also have anything from... Uh, 
Jen Luna from Luna Moon, uh, Maple Moon. We have Stockton Farms, we have Waters Farms, we have Villas Acres, and these are all farmers. We have Anderson Farm Beef, we have Stockton Farms Beef and Pork yes. and everything. And we have, uh, of course, we use Bro's Coffee there, and we do a little bit of everybody. We try to cover every single person. So. Well, that is wonderful. I, When you all first opened there, I had the opportunity to go, and at that point, you had set up a, a food truck mm -hmm. of some yes. sort, and I think I had a sausage and pimento cheese yes. biscuit. Are you all still doing that we on Saturdays? We, now we, we've increased that. We okay. do that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday right. from 9 to 2 on Thursday and Friday, and on Saturday from 8 to 2. What's great about that is... I actually designed those menus. Okay. And I was a chef for 30 years also. And basically we run that by, we go in the store and I design those menus by what's in store. So mm -hmm. the whole seasonality of foods, it really helps all the time, so. So you really do work with fresh foods that are oh, in yes, season. Oh yes, absolutely. And that's the biggest thing is if you wanna have a sustainable food system locally, you have to help educate people and try to get them to understand you're not getting certain ingredients 12 months out of the year so this is what you can do with it yes and that's something that i've had to learn i'm trying to do better with that sort of thing so having resources yes. like the walnut street market has been a huge help to me personally yes. so i know it has helped a lot of other people too yes it, so when when did you all first open we opened uh, we we well it started out you'll be just amazed we started this out with me and randy two farmers that's right okay. and then basically that was a year ago in april we started off our online market then we went right into our we opened the store at the end of May, and it's I am overwhelmed, overjoyed, what is a good word to say it, is because of the success of what, what's done for the local community and what they brought to us so we can do what we love to do. That is fantastic. So, do you still have the online option? Yes, we do. Okay. Yep. What is the website for that if people are interested? They want to go through, we go through that, right? It's Cookville Locally Grown. Okay. In uh, at uh, uh, Cookville Locally Grown at... Uh, dot com okay. you know, for gmail.com you can go through that way through our Facebook pages and stuff you can get that wonderful okay so you have a website that you can mm -hmm. order online yeah. you have a Facebook page yep yeah. and is it, it's under cookful it, locally it's Road. under Walnut Street it's Market. under Walnut Street, Street Market. Market okay and we also have the Instagram and you also and, have and Instagram yep yeah. and okay. then that's how you get a hold of us it's basically and come by the store is the biggest yes. thing you once you come by the store you'll really see we're really there the trail I really helped the community to bring them healthy food for everybody yes so. it is wonderful and you should stop by just to go see all the different things they mm -hmm. have. I know the last You'll time I was amazed. in there, there mm -hmm. were things I didn't know what they were. Yes. And so Jim was kind enough to explain to me without making me feel dumb, <laughs> which is always helpful. Yes. So not only it, is it a store with goods, but it's also yeah. educational. Yeah, that's our big thing is educating yes. about yearly about the food and stuff. So, you yes. know, and the food and what everybody does and helping people, first time people that's never done yeah. it before. Yeah. You know, because I'm not getting no younger, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, but we want to be able to pass this on. Yes, know, so. definitely. Well, I think it's a wonderful store. And I do have to say that your bratwurst, mm -hmm. I believe, yes. yep. if you haven't tried them, you should get them. We have them for several events at our house. <laughs> Birthdays, yes. Christmas, everything. Yes, yeah, they're very good. Yes, yes, they are delicious. And all of the fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. there, they're just amazing. And the fact that we have this place in Cookville mm -hmm. that we can go that utilizes our community food yes. and to feed the community. Absolutely. And, and when we go, we look at this whole thing. That is the big thing. We have Cookville and the surrounding areas, all the at-risk areas. We want to make sure everybody, no matter what, is getting healthy yes. food. 12 months out of the year yes. and that's our biggest thing is helping and it's all about the community without the community we can't do what we love to do yeah. so wonderful well I, I noticed I believe on Facebook that you all have an event coming up next weekend yes ma'am all right you'll tell us a little about yeah, that that is our actually it's nice to say it as our second annual all right our second annual it is we call it our fall fest a little bit is what we do is we kind of create we go back to having uh doing sorghum and stuff we have pumpkins and stuff for the kids to do we have all kinds of other events with the vendors Plus, we have a pancake breakfast that morning, mm -hmm. and I think that'll run from like 8 to 10.30, and then we're going to go right into a pig roast. All right. So we have live music, too. All right. Well, you can't beat all of that. No, that sounds fantastic. That's a great time. All right. So next week, they're having their second annual Fall Fest, so mm -hmm. go check them out, the Walnut Street Market, and check them out any time. Well, what, one more time about what your days and hours are. Our days and hours, we are actually, the store's open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday okay. from 9 to 5, and Saturday from 8 to 2. Okay. And then the food truck is open Thursday, Friday. From eight, from nine to two, and Saturday from eight to two. All right. Well, if you didn't catch all that, yes. check out their Facebook page, their website, or their Instagram. Right. Yes. All right. And if there's any other questions, please just stop by the store and see them and help promote fresh yes. food in the mm -hmm. community. All right. Thank you, Jim. Well, we thank enjoyed you having, for having you. Me. Yeah, thank you. All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you.
come out to the 2021 Blues and Brews Craft Beer Festival on Saturday, October 16th. There'll be over 100 craft beers to sample, plus selections from the Upper Cumberland Home Brewers Association and featured local breweries. Get your tickets today at wcte.org slash brews. Pick up your stride and join the elite who have run the annual Haunted Half Marathon. Your 13.1 miles as a single runner or with a relay team will earn you a finisher's medal, bragging rights, and best of all, a commemorative long sleeve race shirt. Enjoy running as a group again. Get registered today. Welcome back. Joining me now is Justin Blackman. Justin is a double local business owner. He is a pyrography artist and owner of Antwood Workshop and the owner, along with his wife, Emily, of Root Salon. So Justin, can you explain what pyrography is and tell us a little bit about your process as an artist? Uh, so pyrography is a fancy term for wood burning, uh, but you can buy a hobby burner at any craft store and uh, essentially you're shading with uh, a wood iron. Um, and making imagery. That sounds fantastic and like something I couldn't do. So I'm glad that we have artists like you who can do that. So where can people find your work? Uh, so I've got work located at Silver Fern. Um, and also I have a Tennessee map that I made uh, in Soulcraft Coffee. Um, uh, and I've got shows coming up next year, um, some local shows and some out of state. Uh, but I do keep uh, people uh, up to date on my social media. Um, as well as when those are. Fantastic. When did you get started doing pyrography? And I have to be honest, I was afraid I was going to mispronounce this. So hopefully I haven't done that yet. But when did you get started with this? Uh, I started I started pyrography um, about eight years ago, okay. I think. I've always been an artist, uh, and I think I've wanted to try a new medium that challenged me. And it is a challenging uh, medium for sure. Uh, but uh, I picked up the wood iron and never put it down and just kept going. That's fantastic. What are some of the mediums that you tried before you discovered that uh, this was your passion? I've done painting, sculpture, a okay. uh, little bit of everything. And I think with the, the wood burning, it was, uh, you know, there's no going back. So once you, it's always progress forward, which is, I like to use that in, in more aspects than progress just art. Progress forward. But yes. Yes, that's a, that's a great motto. I may have to start using that progress <laughs> for it. Not, you can't mess up, because if you do, then it's too late. Yeah, they're uh, uh, happy little mistakes. That's Bob right. Ross. Happy little yes. mistakes. Nice so. Bob Ross reference. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so in addition to being an artist and owning your art studio company, how do you refer to that? Art company? Uh, studio. Art studio. Artist. Uh, yeah. uh, you, along with your wife, Emily, also yes. own and operate Root Salon. Yes. So, with, and from my internet research, really valid, I'm sure, you all refer to it as creative space for you and your hair. Yes. So, why don't you share a little bit about yours and Emily's vision for the salon and the services you offer? Uh, I think, and I'm, I'm going to speak a lot on behalf of my wife on this because she is the one that goes in, you know, every day, puts in the hard work with a really great group of people. Um, and they are on a platform. I think the original idea of the salon was she wanted to have a, a stage for them to work off. And they're actively, you know, they're doing chemistry um, and sculpting and art on hair. Uh, and it's a pretty mm -hmm. incredible thing uh, to go in there. So the space itself was set up to kind of accentuate uh, the clientele and the people giving the services um, in general. So when you, you go in there Tuesday through Saturday, uh, you are in a a room full of creatives uh, working very hard and that's a lot uh, to be in and I think that's something that's helped with the success that they've had is is that in itself. Yes, that's wonderful. We were there recently, uh, just now you, know, you and Emily are supportive of our community and that you all, you and your wife Emily, recently hosted a fundraiser for Art Round Tennessee and the Art Prowl at Root Salon. So what made you all decide to get involved and to support the organization? Uh, so I had done Art Prowl previously, uh, but this year I was approached by Jen Luna and Anna Dunn uh, about joining the board uh, for Art Round Tennessee. And they, uh, you know, I've had more doors open for me uh, through community from just active engagement and talking with people. Uh, and I think that's led to probably some of my greatest successes as well as my wife, uh, just being in the community and supporting, 
you know, I, I like to think of it as a mountain and we're all on it. And so we're not always moving upwards, but when someone falls, uh, having that sense of community has, mm -hmm. has elevated us. And I think Art Round Tennessee for me, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's just shown me so much more from just the stance of not only my art, but community art and what it can do uh, for us. What a wonderful take on that. And, and you heard it, getting involved with your no local nonprofits will lead to success. In, in general, in your life, in your jobs, and, and everything. It's good to be able to have that sense of community and support each other. Yes. So where is Root Salon located? Uh, Root Salon is uh, 1227 North Washington Avenue. Um, it is in the Washington Crossing space, um, which they have totally redone that building. Yes. Uh, Matt Allen and Mike Real uh, have done an incredible job uh, on that building, and, and a lot of people have moved into it. There's a dance studio. Uh, yoga, kids yoga, uh, so there's so many things uh, to, to, to go and, and check out there at that space itself. Yes, if you haven't been to check out that area, you should definitely go. It is all remodeled and redone with lots of great businesses in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe you also have some of your art up there. Is that correct, at Root Salon? Um, I've got a little bit of my yeah. art. That was, uh, a, uh, my, uh, my wife is a big champion of me and uh, really pushed me to put it in there. I, I tried to keep it out of there for a long time. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I do have some art in there as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been really good. It's a really good creative space for, for anyone that is, is into that, you know? Yes, even just walking in, I wasn't even there for a service. I just went to see it and just the atmosphere, it just makes you comfortable and a place that you wanna be. Yes. Definitely. So where can people find more information about Root Salon? Uh, you can visit us online. It's www.roots.salon. They also have a Facebook and an Instagram as well. Um, and I would recommend as well just calling or walking in and saying hi and finding out what they can actually do for you. Um, and it's a wonderful thing. It really is. All right. Well, thank you, Justin, for being with us. And everyone check out his art at Antwood Workshop and Roots Salon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Living Minute, a look at the latest medical innovations changing our lives. Brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific's Coronavirus Testing Program for Schools and the Health Channel. As the Delta variant continues to cause more people to be hospitalized, many are wondering if the new Mu variant and other variants are as dangerous. The threat board that some of the scientists are using to keep track of these variants to say which ones of these are demonstrated to really cause significant disease and have increased transmission like Delta. There are three classifications given to variants based on how easily they spread, the severity of the symptoms and how they are treated. We're still in a space right now where the mu variant is something to keep an eye on for the future rather than a concern. Experts say if you are vaccinated, the severity of the symptoms and chances of being hospitalized are lessened. Welcome back to Live at Five on WCTE PBS. Our final guest this evening is Corey Edgington, owner of Select Designs. Select Designs is a local business here in Cookville and it creates custom printed apparel and merchandise and is located at 226 West C Stevens Street, excuse me. Corey also has a new project called Hey Angel that just launched last week. So before we hear about more about Hey Angel, why don't you tell us a little more about your background and select design? All right, so I graduated from tech with a marketing degree and since graduation day, have been trying to use that to the best of my ability. Um, when I had my second kid, I started working part-time at Select Designs. It's a family-owned business, women ran, for 14, well, probably uh, 10 years at that point. So I worked part-time there, loved it, and always jokingly said, if you guys ever wanna sell this, when you're done, call me. So fast forward, they were kinda ready to wrap it up, and they called, and at that time, I was working uh, for our church. I was their social media director and doing things there, and they called and they said, hey, we think we're ready to kinda wrap it up. And I was like, okay, well, I'm too busy, sorry. Call the next person, and Drew was like, no, we're gonna talk about it. So moving for moved forward from that, and here we are. So we took over January 1 of last year. Okay, and it, it seems has, like it's been longer mm -hmm, than that. Yeah. And it has been an absolute whirlwind since January 1, all the, all exactly. the events all the events to navigate as a small business owner first yes. time small business owner so yes well, I've, I've been kind of 
nonchalantly stalking I love on, it. on I love social it. media. So it does surprise me that it has only been that long because <laughs> it feels like you've been doing a lot with it, which is, which is fantastic. I know, no offense to the previous owners, but have learned so much more about it and knew about it since you started. Well, we it. had a vision that we really wanted to yeah. get across to people and, and help people understand how the process works and all the things that we could do and just yeah. kind of see where it could go. And it's been really fun. So what are some of the things specifically that you all do? So we screen print. Mm -hmm. For example, yes. we embroider, which is stitching. Um, we do a lot of businesses and a lot of schools, but we do all the fun stuff like the bags and the yes. Christmas stockings and the baby onesies and all of that. So yes. we kind of get to tinker in all of it. And if you are a lover of monograms, mm -hmm. as many people are, they also do that on yep. pretty much anything, right? Pretty much anything. Yeah. 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 Uh, we were just monogram. joking around today and talking about some of the things that we've done. I did a gun case for oh. a little boy for Christmas last year. So. With a monogram on it. With a, a monogram, monogram on it. So, See? Anything. Anything you can think of. That is fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, again, back to my social media stalking. I noticed a few weeks ago that you started teasing something called mm -hmm. Hey Angel, which mm -hmm. is a new project of yours. So, why don't you kind of explain what that is and okay. how, how that came to be? Um, so, Hey Angel is a private line that we have launched out of Select Designs, and everything is sourced from from our shops. So we print everything and we embroider everything. So nothing is bought and resold. Um, it kind of came, we had a little downtime back in the spring and some of the girls in my shop were just kind of embroidering funny things on shirts that they wanted themselves. And I was like, oh, those are cute, I want one. And so they said, okay, well, what do you want on it? And I was like, I don't know, what's something I say all the time? And they were like, hey, Angel. And I was like, hey, Angel. Perfect. So that's kind of how Hey, Angel was born. And so we kind of started talking about it. And we were like, this could be something. Um, and we kind of started looking around. Like, there's not a lot of cute uh, school spirit stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's not a, there, there are local things. But there was a whole market of local stuff that had not been tapped yet. People are always looking for Cookville stuff. Mm -hmm. People are always looking for tech stuff. Yep. Uh, the high schools, high school parents love spirit wear. So we kind of started just really zooming in and kind of looking at like, where could we find somewhere to fit into these and do it really well? And one thing that we did that was really fun was partner with Mary Catherine Detweiler. So the bracelets, I noticed you were sporting yes. one today. Yes, you all can see that mm -hmm. under my other watch. So my we, one watch. <laughs> the one watch everyone. <laughs> but uh, Mary Catherine had a, um, bracelet business that she launched and someone reached out and connected us and I was like that's a great idea I would love to incorporate that so the goal is to kind of partner with to do our thing but also to partner with people that are doing things like that locally and give them a little more of a platform yes. to get their products out there and then at the end of each quarter the goal is to take a percentage of what we make and put it straight back into our community so a nonprofit or privately donating to a family yeah. or so we're always looking for either a new nonprofit that's getting started or we hear stories all the time yes. you know the foot traffic is starting to pick back up thank you Lord. Yes. Yes. and so we hear things all the time coming in and out of the shop of people that are in need or things that need attention and so that's the goal is to build a brand that's Promoting positivity and putting back it in the community because, I mean, Cookville's a great place to live. It is. It is a great place. And it kind of And we seems, want to celebrate it. Yes. I almost knocked my pen over. And it kind of seems that we keep going back to this community thing. Yep. That in order to enjoy life and be successful, it takes the community. Yes. And to support yes. the community that you live in. Yeah. And I am personally grateful for more Tennessee Tech things. Right. They, they're difficult to find. And I'm a huge fan of Tennessee Tech, clearly. And so I'm so excited to have oh, more listen, options. It's, we have the cutest, it's a quarter crew like this that says Tennessee Tech on it right now. And it's just, it's so simple, but people love it. And yes. it makes me excited because you always, you put things out there and you're like, oh, are people going to love this? And then when they do, you get so excited. All right. Well, I think that that is all the time all we right. have. We got to talking, but uh, check out Select Designs and Hey Angel. And thank you for being here, Corey. Right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Join us back for the Encore on Sunday at noon. A brand new show of Live at 5 will return at 5 p.m. next Thursday. Thank you for watching.